So I have a doubt. I don't think it's really possible to land a data analyst role without one of these. So I reached out to my subscribers to see if this was possible. People would be like, oh, we're, you know, we have a degree requirement, so I'm sorry, but we can't. To not only learn what issues they had. The entire time I was like, I'm not qualified without a degree. I don't know all of the little things on the resume. I'm not going to get it. I'm not even going to apply. But also, if they even had issues at all. Did you have any adversity with like not having your degree? Uh, to be honest, no. And ultimately, what tactics they used to land their dream jobs. I called, you know, dozens and dozens of recruiters knowing most of them were going to tell me something like, oh, well, if you go to our website, that means, no, I'm not patching you through to a recruiter. What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst. And about a year ago, Google released this data analytics certificate that they and 150 other employers claimed they would accept this in place of a four-year degree. Committed to hire hundreds and even thousands. I mean, that's a pretty good deal, right? Spend three to six months getting this? Over four years for this? For the same job? So earlier this year, I interviewed those that had landed jobs with this Google certificate. There was just one issue. All of these individuals had degrees. Not degrees related to data science, but degrees nonetheless. This this had me questioning whether it was really possible to land a job in this field without at least having a degree. So I wanted to be proved wrong. I reached out to the data nerd community in order to find out the education level of those that landed jobs in this field. And to my surprise, over 20% said they didn't have a degree. That's one out of five data nerds. With this, I then reached out to some volunteer subscribers that wanted to share their experience in landing roles in this field. Let's start with Alex to understand what they were doing before they landed their first roles as data analysts. After high school, I, I was in the military for six years. And from there, I was working, uh, I was working at Lowe's and I knew that I wanted to work in tech. Next is George. So after high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. After trying a semester of school, decided to go back and work full time. I was working at a fraud department for a bank. Then there's Guillermi from Paraguay. A, I major in a CS degree. Who had previously run into issues with finding learning resources in his native language. When I was like seven, 16, 17, um, I got really frustra frustrated with that and I started uh, learning English. Now regarding education, both Alex and Jordan were both pursuing a bachelor's degree when they landed their first role as a data analyst. Hold up, where did you come from? How can you make a video on landing a job without a degree whenever these three are pursuing one? Well, that's actually a valid concern. Ha! Clickbaiter! Well, they landed their role before earning a degree. And as we'll come to find out, having a degree only helps so much. Oh. But I was able to find a data nerd with no connection to higher education. No college, no degree. Uh, I'm gonna leave now. Thanks to the data science king, he ended up putting me in touch with Sergio. You're working as a warehouse worker, and now you've transitioned into a data analyst role. That to me is so cool. So I reached out to Sergio to get his transition story. I was there for three years in the pandemic, and there were two of us that were pretty interchangeable. And uh, why I got interchanged out. So this all leads into the first major topic to explore. Was there any difference in experience from those pursuing a degree versus, well, Sergio? Let's hear Jordan's experience first. I started going to school online part time while I was working. Fit really nice within my schedule, so I didn't have to like quit work and then go to school. And for Alex, this had some benefits during the job search. I, it helped that I was back in college because you know you can put bachelors of data analytics on your resume and then you can put like a little currently enrolled, but that'll get you past a lot of those automatic resume screeners. They just, you know, look for, if you don't have a bachelor's then you just get thrown out nine times out of 10. And for Guillermi, a full-time student, he actually found a need to fulfill. Did you have any adversity with like not having your degree? To be honest, no, because um, uh, here in Paraguay, when in terms of tech related jobs, they usually ask, ask for like a person that's doing like a CS re related degree. But then Sergio with no higher education had a completely different experience. All through school, that's what all everybody told me was to go to college. Your life's gonna be terrible if you don't go to college because college is the thing. And it's like, why necessarily? And because of this, he experienced some tough conversations during the job search. People would be like, oh, well, you know, we have a degree requirement, so I'm sorry, but we can't. Or, you know, I like what you're trying to do, but like I would consider going to get a degree because you know, you can only get so far without one. So not really to my surprise, those that were in school had a clear advantage. But in Sergio's case, he would turn this disadvantage into an advantage, as we'll soon find out. But even before this whole job search, 
where was everybody going to learn the skills that they needed to know in order to become a data analyst? Were they using school exclusively or were they using other resources instead? YouTube content was my number one. Uh, school was a very big second in terms of knowledge gained. I'm the type of person that's like, when I want to learn something, I'll Google it and teach myself. For Jordan, he had a little bit of a different case. He could apply these skills as he learned them. So I was taking some uh, business administration classes, but the majority of my data skills came from doing it on the job and kind of picking up responsibilities that weren't really required of me. For Gil Army, he was applying data skills during his computer science degree. I extensively worked with it in, in my school projects. But what about for someone that doesn't have a formal institution to fall back on on what skills to learn? Well, Sergio ended up finding a mentorship opportunity through Alex the Analyst's Patreon. I found out that if you paid for his, like, I think it was highest tier at the time, you could get like a once a month call with him to like game plan, and just kind of have, you know, marching orders of like, this is what you need to work on. I would say that was like one of the major, major things that helped me was that like, I got to talk to somebody who was a manager in analytics. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Alex's Patreon. <gasps> so where was everybody going in order to learn the skills that they needed to know to become a data analyst? Whole learning what to learn was a big factor. I looked at a lot of the requirements that was on uh, or that were on data analyst and data scientist resumes and then started researching those specific topics. Which is a common approach used by all. So in his case, he learned Tableau and Python, whereas others... When I got hired, I only knew SQL and, and Excel. I was using uh, actually exclusively Excel. And the SQL and Excel combo was a commonality amongst them all. And the dumbest thing I did was I was like, oh, well, I know enough SQL. I'll, you know, learn the rest on the job because how hard could it be? <laughs> We're telling Alex, ah, they'll just pay me to learn the rest if it's that important. Alex is kind of like, okay, yeah. man, if that's what you really want to do. But interesting enough, this approach of learning on the job was very common. I learned most of the skills that I know right now on a neat basis. I don't know a lot of the skills that are required to do my job every day. But I'm very good at learning how to do it quickly. And so I think it's not only important to understand the basics, but also the ability to learn quickly. Be like your boss that could be right behind you while you write the sequence. No, like, no, you're, oh, you, typed, you typed something wrong there. You, you're out. That's it. We're going to hire the next guy. <laughs> I can put the, the comma in the right spot. No, of course yeah. not. They want yeah. results. So once all these individuals had leveled up their skills, what were the tactics they were using in order to land their jobs? Well, nobody really had success using the same approach. As for Gil Army, he... I automated um, a job alert for every, um, for a certain keyword and I automatically applied. I'm not gonna lie, I was intrigued. Did you have any luck through the, any other like jobs come your way? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. uh, the best way to get a job uh, in this area is through networking, to be honest. With this approach, he had friends look out for job opportunities for him, and he finally had one come through. They told me, hey, do you know SQL, some kind of data? And uh, do you have some kind of data skills? And I said, yes, but to be honest, I. Didn't really know a lot, but I applied anyways. And he ended up getting hired on as a data analyst for a major bank in the area. For Alex, he was having a lot of doubts when he was starting out on the job search. I had applied for like a year, just like of random things that looked perfect. The entire time I was like, I'm not qualified without a degree. I don't know all of the little things on the resume. I'm not gonna get it. I'm not even gonna apply. Maybe I sent in 10 applications over the past year. And then I was complaining about, you know, being at the same job and not getting anything. So he decided to reach out to a friend that he considered to be his mentor. He is the type of guy that'll just apply for any job. He'll just do it, he just jumps in. And this mentor motivated him to make a change in his approach. So he went on a resume sending application, like just throwing applications into anything that said data analyst or data scientist, anything. And I got like four or five replies very quickly. In his case, with his Tableau skills, he was able to turn one of those offers into a full-time role as a business intelligence analyst. Alex and Galarmi ended up using some proven approaches whenever you need to go about landing a job when you're starting from scratch. But what I feel most people don't realize is that you can also have success with transitioning into a data analyst role by using the non-data analyst job that you currently have. At the time, I knew the most about Excel. So I was like, hey, I could probably, you know, like, create a basic dashboard to measure the performance of our department. In his case, to solve a need for his company. They didn't know anything about like how well they're doing, like how well the department is doing. He went on to create even more needed dashboards within his department. Because of this, he became the go-to data nerd. It was just kind of me 
going above and beyond what I needed to do at work and showcasing my experience that kind of made me stood out and made them want to bring me on. Following this, his company created a new department to monitor fraud in which he was hired on as a data analyst. Now moving into this last tactic, Sergio used an approach recommended to him by Alex the analyst. You're gonna need to start reaching out to recruiters. And I was kind of like, what does that mean? He was like, just call them. Like there are people who like place you in jobs, just call them. I would just call and like try to get to a recruiter. And I would just kind of say like, all right, well, I'm looking to get into data analytics and I would just love any job that can kind of, you know, help me build those skills. Sergio would go on to create a spreadsheet full of recruiters and call them on a weekly basis. I, I had a recruiter eventually just had something for me. And this was for a support analyst role, which his first thoughts were, Wait, I want to be a data analyst. Why'd you send me this? But he ended up taking this job to get his foot in the door. And from there, he took a similar approach to Jordan. I turned every excuse possible to use SQL into a reason to use SQL while I was there. So somebody was like, hey, I need information on transactions with these codes. If I saw a ticket, I would just snatch it up even if I didn't know how to do it. And this experience would eventually lead him to landing a data analyst role at PayPal. I had six months experience of that, the door was open. So you uh, so you proved Alex wrong then. You learned SQL on the job then. Uh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I got really lucky with that team though. So going through these interviews, I feel like I was proven wrong in that I do think now that you can land a job as a data analyst without having a degree. Does it help if you're in school at the same time? Yes, but it is possible to do it without a degree. And I think there are lessons that even job seekers with degrees can learn from. You should apply for jobs, even if you're not 100% qualified for it. Uh, because to be honest, for this data job that I'm doing right now, I didn't have all of the qualifications, but I applied anyways. For Alex, imposter syndrome seemed to be an even bigger challenge to overcome than not having a degree itself. Getting this job was a big turning point because it had proven that I could climb that mountain that I had set in the in the goal. And then I climbed it and then, you know, I'm like, oh, well, okay, I could have done that, you know, ages ago, but I didn't. And for Jordan, he had similar challenges as well. That's really the biggest issue that I had in the beginning was trying to stay motivated when I encountered these problems. So Alex found a way to turn this negative into a positive. I, I learned that if I don't feel imposter syndrome, I'm not pushing myself hard enough. I'm already having the feeling about it. I might as well just jump in and try to rise to that occasion. But as Sergio put it eloquently, you have to have thick skin to succeed. And I'm not afraid to get told the I, I always took it as a numbers game. I, I called, you know, dozens and dozens of recruiters knowing most of them were gonna tell me something like, oh, well, if you go to our website, that means, no, I'm not patching you through to a recruiter. And he makes this great final point to help you stand out. It's a lot of it is just, just human to human, man. It's a lot of like people will make irrational decisions because they like you. Because there's nothing rational about hiring to do with no experience and no degree. Story is what got me there, not my resume. All right. So thank you to the interviewees for help with this video. One last note. I'd love to have some females perspective on this topic. I tried to actually reach out to a few for this one, but it ended up not working out. So if you fit this, check out the poll below so we can do an upcoming video for it. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. If you're interested in seeing the interviews that I did with the Google Data Analytics certificate holders that landed jobs, check out this. That, I'll see you in the next one.